Well, good morning and uh, happy Easter to you. Here we are, uh, uh, Easter morning for the sunrise service. And actually, I'm, I'm looking out the window over here and I see that the sun has already mostly uh, risen, but we're going to take some time to, to celebrate Easter together. I've worn my uh, tie. I don't expect that at this hour you've dressed up, um, but I was thinking back to a time when we used to meet together as a church years ago for a sunrise service, often actually with other churches. And it was just, um, it was a wonderful time to get together and to, and to think about the meaning of Easter. And so I wanted to begin this morning, um, well, let me, let me begin with a prayer, but I, I wanna start with a question. And that question is, does Easter matter? Does Easter matter? And so maybe you can be thinking about that, um, but first let me pray. Lord, as we uh, join here digitally to, to think about the Easter resurrection, we pray that you would give us a, a mind that, that is eager to grasp the things that are true, the things that are good and the things that are right. So Father, I pray your blessing on our time together. And I ask for this in the name and the power of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, so the question that I wanna to pose to you is, does Easter matter? Is it important? I know we've been celebrating Easter for 2000 years, but is it just a, a dry tradition, an excuse for candy? Or um, does Easter have some greater significance and some greater meaning? And I, I think what I would like to say is that I believe Easter does matter because it's the resurrection that rescues us from fear. Let me say that one more time. The resurrection rescues us from fear. Now, I think the resurrection does more than that, but this morning at least, I'd like to talk just about the way that the Easter resurrection can liberate us from fear. And, and two types of fear, one, a fear of death, and secondly, a fear of people, uh, what people might think of you or what they might do to you. And I thought it would be helpful for us if we looked at the life of Peter. And Peter is one of the disciples, he's a follower of Jesus. And what's really interesting about Peter's life is that before the resurrection, that is before Easter, uh, Peter is fearful. He is, he's afraid. He's afraid of dying, and that's understandable. Um, and he's also afraid of people, what they would think of him and what they might do to him. But after the resurrection, that is on the other side of Easter, Peter is like a completely different man. He has incredible confidence. And, What's, what has changed is that the fear is gone. It's just, it's completely evaporated. And the event that has caused the fear to leave is the resurrection of Jesus. And that is exactly what we're celebrating on Easter. It's the resurrection of Jesus, the most important event in all of human history. And I, if you would believe it, if you would understand it, it, it would be the most important event in your life. So let's just talk a little bit about Peter um, before the resurrection, uh, before Easter. And if, if you could picture Peter before the Easter morning, in fact, let's think about him on, on Friday night. Friday night, Jesus has been arrested and um, he's under trial. And Peter is outside of the trial area. It's, it's dark, it's cold, and he, he comes close to the fire. And in the light of the fire, people recognize him and they begin to ask him, aren't you one of those followers of Jesus? And Peter says, no, I'm not, he lies. And what's really remarkable is that one of the people who asks him if he's a follower of Jesus is a servant girl. So she has no position and no power. I mean, really is, is not a, a big threat to Peter at all. But Peter is so fearful that even with the servant girl, he says, no, I, I don't know him. And then another person asks him. And then another person. So three times he's asked if he knows Jesus and three times he denies Christ. And in fact, on the third denial, um, Peter begins to swear and to, and to call down curses and says, I don't know the man. And as soon as he says that, he hears the rooster crow and he remembers the words of Jesus that, that he would deny Christ three times before the rooster crowed. And so when that rooster crowed, he remembered those words of Jesus and he's filled with a sense of, of guilt and remorse and he goes out and he weeps bitterly. Now, why does Peter lie? Well, very clearly, he's afraid. I mean, he's afraid that, that they might arrest him. And that's a legitimate fear. After all, he, he had just cut off the ear of one of the high priest servants trying to defend Jesus. And he sees now that Jesus is arrested. He knows that he could be arrested. He must suspect that there's a chance Jesus will be killed. And he's afraid that he might be killed as well. And so Peter's afraid. I mean, he's a, he's a man who's really petrified and afraid of death and afraid of what people think and what people might do. Now, this fear, which, which rules Peter's life before the resurrection, 
is gone after the resurrection. And so now let me take you to Easter morning. And so Easter morning, um, there's no fear, no fear of death and, and no fear of people, what they might think or what they might do. And so I'd like to begin Easter morning right where the scriptures begin Easter morning, and that is with the women who get up early in the morning, even earlier than this. And they're heading to the tomb, to the tomb where Christ has, has been laid. And their plan is to anoint the body with perfume. And as they're heading to the tomb, they wonder who will roll away the stone that they could get access to the body. But it turns out they don't need to be worried about that because an angel has rolled away the tomb and has, has rolled away the, the stone. And I'm gonna read here from Matthew 28. It says, behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. And so right there, the, the concept of fear is introduced. There's a fear because of the power of this angel. But the angel said to the women, not to the guards, but to the women, listen to this, it's a key phrase. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He's not here, for he has risen, as he said. And so here's the first connection with do not fear and the resurrection of Jesus. Don't fear because Jesus has risen. He's been resurrected. And the women then are told to go and tell the disciples. And so the passage says that they leave with fear and great joy. So they told, they've been told, don't be afraid, but they can't help it. They don't really understand yet what it means this Easter morning. And so they leave with joy, but still fear. And as they're traveling, I'm in Matthew 28, verse nine, it says, and behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. I mean, those really are the first words that Jesus speaks after his resurrections, greetings. And then right after that, the first message, do not be afraid. And so I want you to hear those words for you today. Do not be afraid. If you believe in the resurrected Jesus, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of death and do not be afraid of what people might think of you or even what people might do to you. The resurrection means a complete and absolute freedom from fear. And on Easter, nobody needs that message more perhaps than Peter. And so the women are told to go tell the disciples and in Mark, we're told that they're told specifically by the angel, go tell Peter. Peter needs to hear this, that the tomb is empty. And so they tell Peter, and Peter's response is to run, not away. He doesn't run from Christ, but he runs to the tomb to see if this is actually true. And in Luke 24, it says, Peter rose and ran to the tomb, and stopping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. So Peter is is a witness to the emptiness of the tomb, and he's marveling at this. He still doesn't quite grasp the resurrection, but it's, 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 it's coming upon him, he's marveling at this, why? Because Peter is beginning to understand that this Easter morning means a freedom from sin and guilt. And he feels sinful and guilty. After all, he has denied Jesus three times. And not only a freedom from the fear of sin and death, a fear of hell, but Peter has been suffering from a fear of people. What will people think? What will people do? But if the resurrection is true, then there's no reason to fear death because Christ could raise you up from the dead. And in fact, it's his promise that you will have life eternal, forgiveness of sins and eternal life because of the resurrection. And that's what changes Peter from a fearful man to a fearless man. Now, I wanna ask you a question. What if you weren't afraid anymore? What if you weren't afraid anymore? What if you weren't afraid of dying? What if you weren't afraid of getting sick? What if you weren't afraid of, of, of what people think about you? Imagine the sense of freedom and not being uh, concerned about what other people are thinking about you, what they might say about you, what they might do to you, how they might affect your job, how they might affect your reputation. What if you didn't fear any of that? Well, the reason Easter matters is because Easter offers us a fearless life, a life which is, which is liberated from the chains of fear, the fear of dying and the fear of, of people. Now, 
we've been talking about Peter, and so let me give you an example of what it looks like to live a life free of fear. In Acts chapter 2, we read about life after Easter, after the resurrection. And what we find is that Peter is transformed. He's no longer this timid and fearful man. Now he's a man with incredible boldness. And so in Acts chapter 2, Peter stands up filled with the Holy Spirit, and he begins to preach to a large crowd about Jesus. And then in Acts chapter 4, he's arrested. He's brought before the religious leaders, and he begins to speak to them, and he speaks to them with such confidence and he teaches with such power that the, the religious leaders who are looking to punish him, it, well, this is what it says in Acts chapter four, verse 13. It says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they realized that they were uneducated, ordinary men, common men, they were astounded, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. And what these religious leaders see is that Peter has has undergone a, a, a miraculous transformation. He's an ordinary, uneducated man, but he's speaking with power and with confidence. There's no trace of fear. Where did that come from? It came from the resurrection. It came from Peter's belief that Jesus Christ is the living one, the Son of God, raised by the power of God from the dead. And Peter is, is now free from the fear of sin and guilt, free from the fear of death, and free from the fear of being judged by other people. And so when he's arrested again, and they're threatening him, and they want to kill him, uh, Peter speaks and he says, we must obey God rather than man. I'm reading here from Acts chapter five. And then Peter gives this testimony about Jesus. He says, the God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging on a tree. God exalted him at, at his right hand as leader and as savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Now, can I tell you that Jesus is offering each person, you and me, forgiveness of sins through repentance. And that offer comes to us because of the resurrection. Now, when the leaders heard this, they were enraged, it says, and they wanted to kill Peter, but Peter was not afraid. Because Peter has this incredible confidence, a fearlessness because of the resurrection, fearless about death because of forgiveness, no fear of sin, and because of the Holy Spirit, a power to follow Christ and to act in a way that, that shows uh, no concern about what people might say or think or even what they might do. Yes, that, that, that's why Easter matters is because it absolutely changes people's lives and it brings them into a place of fearlessness. And that is true not only of Peter, but it's been true of Christians throughout history. And so let me take you to the year 313. It's a year which is not unlike the year we've been experiencing. Actually, it was much worse. In the Roman Empire, there was plagues and pestilence and there were wars. And the plagues and, and, uh, were, were so bad that the, the, the um, population was, was decimated. Death was everywhere. And the way that the, the most people responded was in fear. People began to isolate themselves. Um, they hoarded. And they didn't share because they were afraid if they shared what they had with those who were in need, with those who were starving, then they themselves would be in need and they would starve. And so there was a breakdown of society as people were, were gripped by this incredible fear. But there was one group of people, a small maligned group of people who behaved differently. And those were Christians. And do you know what the Christians did? In the year 313, when everybody else was terrified, when they were uh, hiding away from each other because of fear of plague, when they were hoarding their resources because of fear of famine, the Christians went out. And, and the dead who were lying on the streets, they buried them. They showed respect, they cared for families, and then they took the starving, and they gathered them together and they gave them bread. And the citizens of, of the Roman Empire noticed that the Christians were the only ones living in this fearless way. And it made a huge impact on them. It changed the reputation of Christianity. And I wonder if, if in this time, God isn't calling us to a fearless life. We're, we're not afraid of, of, of catching a sickness. We're not afraid of a virus. We're not afraid of what people might say or think if we speak about Jesus. And you know, that wasn't, that wasn't just the experience of Peter or the early church. It's been the experience of Christians all throughout history. I'm thinking about missionaries who travel to foreign lands, which wasn't easy and which was very dangerous. And why would they do that? Because they were fearless. 
I'm thinking about somebody like Mother Teresa who cared for the poor and for lepers. Now, let me ask you this question. What would motivate her to do something like that? It's a fearlessness that comes from a belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So does Easter matter? Well, absolutely it matters. It matters to those Christians in 313 who were suffering and needed somebody to care for them. Well, it mattered to those who were hungry and needed somebody to feed them. It matters today to those who, who have never heard the good news about Jesus and they need somebody who's fearless to speak about Jesus and to say the truth, that Jesus is the one and only way to God, that he, is, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I wonder if we would be those people who are fearless because we know that Christ has been raised from the dead. And then if we believe that, if we know that, then we're willing to risk our lives. We're willing to risk our reputation for the sake of Christ. Now, I'm not at all suggesting that God wants us to risk our lives unnecessarily. I don't mean that. I don't think that we're just to live a, a, a wild and abandoned life um, for the sake of convenience or, um, or ease, but for the sake of Christ. For the sake of Christ, could we risk our lives, our health, to serve and care for others? Could we risk our reputation? Because we care more about the reputation of Jesus than our own reputation, because we care more about those who, who have yet to receive his forgiveness through repentance than we do about how people might feel about us. This resurrection of Christ, it's the most important thing. Most important thing in history and the most important thing in our life today. It is, it is the one thing that can rescue us from fear. Now, okay, let me just say to you who are Christians, don't we sometimes fall back into fear? We do. Sometimes we fall back into fear. We've been rescued from fear, but then we fall back in. And that happened with Peter. Peter did that too. You're not alone if you've fallen back into fear. If you feel a sense of anxiety about your health or about your reputation, Peter felt that. Uh, there was a time in, uh, that's captured in the book of Galatians where Peter um, abandons his fellowship with Gentiles because he wants to impress these Jewish leaders. And he pulls back from them and starts to live as if he could earn his way into God's good graces. And why is he doing that? Well, it's because he's afraid of what these people think. He's afraid that, that, that maybe his standing with God is, is not based only on the resurrection of Jesus, but also maybe is based on how well he performs as a religious person. And he's living in fear. It's affect, affecting his relationship with other people and his relationship with God. And do you know what was necessary? He needed to be reminded of the death and resurrection of Christ. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul did. He confronted Peter and he said, Peter, you and I are Jews, we're not Gentiles, but we know this, we are justified, not by our works, not by living religious lives, but we are made righteous by a belief in, in the crucified and risen Christ. And then Paul goes on to explain how his whole identity has been shaped now by the resurrection of Christ. He says, I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Why does he live? Because Christ is living in him. And so on this Easter morning, let me speak to you and to me, and let me say this. It's my desire that we would experience that fearless life by remembering Easter, by remembering the resurrection. That's what Easter is. It's a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I hope that you can, you can grab a hold of that today, that this very morning, you would turn your mind to the resurrection of Jesus Christ and say, well, what can people do to me? If God is for me, who can be against me? Even if they would do the worst, even if they would kill me, Christ will raise me up. And so we don't have a fear anymore of death or of people, but instead we have a great and mighty confidence in Christ. We don't have a fear anymore of sin, not of its guilt, not of its power to drag us into hell, because we recognize that through a belief in the risen Jesus Christ, we will have life with Jesus, not just today, not just tomorrow, but for all of eternity. And so I would like to end uh, this morning um, with a few lines from a, a, a contemporary hymn. And I love this hymn, it's called In Christ Alone. And here's, here's one of the lines that I think is, is so fitting for Easter. It says this, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. No, no fear, no guilt. And then here's the last lines of the song, and, and I love the way this ends. It says, no power of hell, no scheme of man 
can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Let me pray for you that you would stand in the power of Christ. Let's pray. Father, on this Easter morning with the sun rising, with the, the rays here I'm shining into the room, Lord, may we remember your great power. May we remember the glory of the risen Christ. And may that glory and that power, may that truth of Christ's resurrection, may it drive out all fear. Lord, may we live a life that is free from the fear of death, free from the fear of sin and guilt, free from the fear of what people might think or say or do. And instead, Lord, may we enjoy that freedom to follow you and to serve others in your name. Amen. And amen. Have a happy Easter.